Thank you so much for tuning in to Learn Linux TV, your source for Linux-related fun and learning. I love producing Linux-related content for you, but I can't do it alone. If the content on this channel has been helpful to you, then please consider supporting Learn Linux TV. And one of the ways that you could do that is by becoming a patron, which will give you access to exclusive perks. Also, be sure to check out my latest book, Mastering Ubuntu Server 4th Edition. And while you're here, be sure to subscribe. New content is uploaded each and every week. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Now, let's get started with today's video. So far in this series, we've learned a lot about bash scripting. But the thing is, have we actually written a bash script that's, well, useful? Well, actually, no, we really haven't. And that's the thing about learning programming or scripting languages, bash in this case, is that we have to get through some things that aren't necessarily going to look like real life examples before we can get to the real life examples. But in this particular video, what we're going to do is take a look at a script that actually is useful for something. So this one's going to be especially fun. And you know what? Let's just dive right in. In this lesson, what I'm going to do is walk you through creating a universal update script. Before we create it though, I do want to let you know that there's going to be some redundancy and some issues with this script. And yes, I already know about that, but we'll be using this script a few more times in this series and making it better. So we're going to look the other way for now, since we'll be making it more efficient later on. And to make this even more fun, I'm going to use multiple concepts that we've learned up to now, and I might even sneak in some additional things that we haven't gone over yet. So let's go ahead and open up our script yet again. And what I'll do is write it out, and then I'll take you through it line by line and let you know exactly what it's doing. And here's the script that we're going to use in today's lesson. I call this my universal update script. If you're like me and you use a mix of Linux distributions, this could actually be useful. And I'll actually show you guys how to implement this properly in a future lesson, which will make it even better. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at what I'm doing, so that way we can understand what the heck is going on here. Now, what I have here are two if statements. The first one is checking for the existence of a directory. That's what the dash D is, if you recall from a previous lesson. And specifically, I'm looking for a directory under the Etsy directory called pacman.d. This particular directory is common on Arch Linux systems. Therefore, if this script sees this particular directory that it does exist, then that means that the host the script is being run on is actually an Arch Linux host. So in that case, it's going to run sudo pacman dash capital S Y U. And if you didn't already know, that's the command on Arch Linux systems that you would use to install all the updates that are currently available. Now, if that test case is not true, that directory does not exist on the host that is running this script, it's going to move on to the next if statement. And the next one is also looking for a directory. This time though, it's Etsy apt. And the Etsy app directory is going to be common on any Linux distribution that uses apt as its package manager. And primarily that means that the host is probably Debian or Ubuntu. However, there's a bunch of distributions that are based on Debian, as well as a bunch of distributions that are based on Ubuntu. We call those forks or spinoffs, if you will. We're not going to get into that. But anyway, if it is a system that has apt available, then we're going to run sudo apt update. And what that does on a Debian or Ubuntu system is that has the system check in with the repository server. It basically catalogs the software that's available on that server and refreshes its local index. That's something that Ubuntu and Debian users do pretty much every day when they're doing package management of some kind. They will run that command to refresh the package index. After it does that, it's going to run sudo apt dist upgrade then the if statement is over, and the entire script is over as well. Now, like I mentioned earlier in the video, there's several things at least wrong with this script, but we're going to look the other way for now, and we will actually take a look at this script at least one more time in this series and make it better, 
So let's just go ahead and continue. So I'll save the file and I'll minimize it. And the distribution that I'm running right now is not Ubuntu or Debian, but it actually is based on Ubuntu. Specifically, it's Pop! OS, if you were curious. And Pop! OS is actually built on top of Ubuntu. So what should happen is when I run this script, it's going to skip the first if statement because when it checks the criteria, the pacman.d directory will not be found, but it will find the Etsy app directory. So the commands within the second if statement, those should actually run. Let's go ahead and see if that happens. So it's asking me for my password. I did use sudo within the script, so that's actually expected. So I'll type that in. And it's running sudo apt update right now. That's what the output of that looks like if you haven't already seen it. And it's telling me that I have 171 packages that are available to be upgraded with seven newly installed to satisfy any requirements of those updates. 44 of those updates are standard security updates like you see here. Now, I always tell everybody, keep your systems up to date and always install the latest packages as soon as they're available. And no, I'm not a hypocrite. This particular laptop is my studio laptop. I wipe it all the time and reload the distributions on this. So I don't really consider this a production computer. So I don't really care if it's out of date. But then again, being as out of date as I am, that's probably not the greatest thing in the world. But anyway, you saw that this script did in fact work. It's trying to update the packages on this particular computer. And if I was to type Y and then press enter to confirm this, then it's going to go ahead and install everything that you see right here. But in the interest of time, I'm just going to cancel out by typing N for no. And now I'm back to the command line. So I'll bring up the script yet again, and I'll just give you another quick overview of what I'm doing. And then what I'll do is change this script to address maybe one of the complaints that I have personally. If you are looking at this script and you already see some problems, then maybe the one that I'll be addressing later in this lesson will address that in particular. If not, we'll get to it later. But first, like I mentioned, what I'm doing here is I'm checking for the existence of Etsy pacman.d. And that tells the script to run sudo pacman syu if that directory is present. That directory should only be present on an Arch Linux system. Now, to be fair, you could create that directory and then this script would run and then break or be unsuccessful if you created that directory on a non Arch Linux system. But we're going to assume for now that the user's not going to do that. But anyway, the first if statement didn't prove true. It didn't evaluate to true. So that command didn't run. It moved on to the second, the Etsy app directory that did exist in my case. Like I mentioned, my distro is based on Ubuntu. So in that case, it ran sudo apt update and then sudo apt dist upgrade. So let's go ahead and change up the script. What I'm going to do is create a variable up here near the top. And I will name the variable release underscore file. And I will set that equal to slash Etsy slash OS hyphen release. And this is a file that actually exists on the file system. Most distributions, if not all of them, they should have this file, at least all the ones that I've tried personally, they all have this particular file. So that's something that at least the majority of distributions of Linux have in common. And if I minimize this right here, I can use the cat command against that file and show you guys what that actually contains. In my case, like I mentioned, I'm running on Pop! OS. So what you see right here is the release information, the distribution information for the distribution that I am running on this computer. So I'm going to use this file within our script. So for the release file variable, it just points to the location and file name of that file. Next, what I'm going to do is remove this criteria right here and type new criteria. I'll type grep-q. And what I want to do is search for the term arch inside the release file. And the rest is going to stay the same, at least in this if statement. But what I'll do is change up this one as well. And I'll again run grep-q. I'll take a look for Ubuntu and I want to search in release file. And I'll leave the rest the same. The upgrade commands, they don't change. We're just changing how we actually look at this or how we determine which distribution we're on. So I'll save the file and we'll go ahead and run it. 
Now, spoiler alert, this will not run, in my case, at all. So if I execute the script, nothing's going to happen. Why? Well, because I'm not running on either of these. I'm running on Pop! OS. So depending on which distribution you are running, you could change the search criteria right here. What I'm going to do is just have it look for the word pop that is in the release file. So I'll save this version of the script and try this again. And as you can see, it's doing the same thing as last time. It wants to update all of the packages on my system. I'll say no for now, and let's go ahead and bring up the script yet again. Now, what we have here is the grep command, which is a standard Linux command. You'll see this all over the place. It's very popular. Now, dash Q is quiet mode. We don't really want to print anything on the screen, but we do want the grep command to check for the existence of text, and that's what grep does. Grep is able to search text files for specific strings. It also supports regular expressions, even though we don't get into that in this series. But in this case, the grep command is looking for the word arch, inside the release file. I removed the brackets because I'm not using or trying to use the test command. I want to use an actual Linux command, and you can use a Linux command as the criteria for an if statement. So if this statement is true, and true in this case refers to the fact that arch will be in the release file, then it's going to run sudo pacman-syu. In our case though, it's not going to find arch inside the release file, so it's going to move on to the second if statement here. And this one in particular is now going to look for the word pop or Ubuntu if you left yours alone. So this if statement will evaluate to true. And then it's going to run these two commands just like it did last time. Now, before we continue, I want to address the comments in this file as well, something we haven't been using quite often in the series. Comments are awesome. In each of the lines that begin with a numerical symbol, like you see here, or a pound symbol, whatever you want to call it, those are actually comments. Comments are completely ignored by Bash when Bash runs a script, or even if you were to type this on the command line, it'll ignore that too. It doesn't ignore the first one because that's our shebang. It needs that. But any other line that starts with a pound symbol, those are comments, and they'll do absolutely nothing. And the reason why we include these is if somebody is looking at this file, Maybe we want to give them some information to explain what we're doing. And in that case, what we would do is put that information in a comment. It's very common to do that. But again, once we run the script, those lines will be completely ignored. Now, what I'm going to do is actually change this back to Ubuntu. And I want to illustrate a new problem that I've just created by creating the script the way that I've done it in this particular version of the script. Before, the script was looking for the presence of the Etsy apt directory, which it will find on both Debian and Ubuntu. Now, what I'm doing is I'm looking for the existence of text within a release file, or a file in general, it doesn't really matter what the file is. And overall, that's a better way to do this. Still not the best way to do this, but it is a better way. But unfortunately, we have introduced a regression in this script, the previous version that actually would work on both Debian and Ubuntu, but this one will work on Ubuntu and Arch. When it gets to the second if statement, it's not going to work if it's a Debian system. And since the previous one would have, this is a regression. So what I'm going to do is actually fix this, but the way that I'm going to fix it, I'll give you a warning, is also not the best way, but you know what? It actually will work. So what I'm going to do is just duplicate the if statement the second one right here, and I'll just change the word that it's searching for. So I'll type that right now. And center this. And I'll also change this right here. And again, I'll run sudo apt update and sudo apt dist upgrade, just like before. And I'll close out the if statement. So with this version of the script, we've actually fixed the problem. This script, like the previous version, will work on both Debian and Ubuntu. But unfortunately, 
the way that I fixed this, I'm actually repeating myself. And well, we don't really want to do that when we're scripting. That's just a waste of space. There has to be a better way to check for Debian or Ubuntu in the release file without having to have two if statements that, well, do the same thing. So actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to remove the if statement that I've just added. Now we're back to just the original two that we had at the beginning. And let's see how we can actually fix this so that way it's going to work on multiple distributions, in this case Debian or Ubuntu. So what I'll do is I'll change this to Debian. That's the first thing that I want to search for. But I also want this statement to be true if the host is running Ubuntu. So what I could do is type two pipe symbols and then grep Q again. This time I'll look for Ubuntu and it'll be the same release file. And that's it. What that's going to do is evaluate to true. That second if statement will evaluate to true if either Debian or Ubuntu is mentioned within that text file. So we have the two pipe symbols right here and that's exactly what that means, it's or. The second if statement will evaluate to true if either the command on the left side of the two pipe symbols or the right side of the two pipe symbols evaluates to true. If either one of them evaluates to true, then the entire check statement here for the if statement is also true. And then it's going to go ahead and run the commands that you see down there. In my case, I am running on pop OS. So I'm going to change this right here to pop and use that as a way to test this script. Let's go ahead and save it and let's run it. And if it works, it should do exactly the same thing as the previous versions did. And so far, so good. It wants to update the packages, so I know it's working. Now there's other comparisons that we can use as well. Like I mentioned, these two pipe symbols right here, that actually means or. I could also do and, which would mean that both of these statements would have to be true in order for the rest of the if statement to run which is probably not going to happen. Well, I guess it could happen in the case of Pop! OS is based on Ubuntu. It's possible that word is in there, but this is really sloppy. Not the best way to do it. Or is probably better in this case, but I'll leave it up to you to experiment with this script. Now, hang on to the script. We will be using it again. There's more that we'll want to do with it. But for right now, we have a semi-useful script. I mean, yeah, you could probably argue that it's better to just run the update commands for the distribution and not use a script for that. But all scripts start out simple and this could be something that you build on later and it becomes, well, really awesome, who knows? But at least it's semi-useful and you're seeing an example of a script that you might actually want to run. So there you go. Class number eight is all set. We've gotten through the eighth video, so we're moving right along through this series. And it's only going to get more advanced from here, so make sure that you understand everything that I've taught you so far before you move on to the next lesson. But when you're ready to move on to the next lesson, well, it's right there waiting for you. So as soon as you are ready for it, I'll go ahead and see you in that video.